How's it going? Welcome into the den. I'm Tobin, back with another quick five. This time, my five favorite fragrances from Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements, seasonals, except for one, kinda. No particular order, right up front, full disclosure. The links in the description are affiliate links to Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements, and I will receive a commission if you use that link from your purchase. Let's get into this. First up, no particular order, right? And all of these, except for the last one, I have full reviews of. So this is just a quick five, and then links to the videos will be in the description. First up, I reviewed this last fall, Atomic Pumpkin. On the shirt is the old label. I have the old label on the splash. I talk about that in the video. Atomic Pumpkin is like the only pumpkin fragrance that I will wear. Up here, I have some runners up. Doing these top five is so hard. Blue Sawin uh, has a pumpkin on the label, but it's not a pumpkin fragrance. And in fact, the pumpkin that is in that is, think more like fresh pumpkin. Like you just go to the pumpkin patch and you pick up a pumpkin and you cut it in half and you, you have the gourd, right? So that's what that is. It's just straight up pumpkin, no spices, no seasonings. I am not a pumpkin spice guy. I do not, you know, I don't dislike pumpkin spice, but I'm not someone who gets excited for pumpkin spice. However, I get excited every autumn, every winter to use this fragrance. The wife and Emily give it a seven and an eight, which is saying a lot because they typically don't like bay rums. Douglas and Francis have worked some of their fragrance Mojo Jojo with this one. And it is one that I will always reach for and one that I wish I would have bought sooner. Real briefly, the notes in this one, West Indian Bay, Moro Blood Orange, Allspice, Light Cinnamon, Just a Scotch, Ginger, Nutmeg, and Elamai Resin. And with all of these guys, you can get those $1.50 samples from Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements. I can never stress or emphasize enough how great I think those are. And if you follow my channel, you know I got oodles and oodles of them. And uh, yeah, so that's my first one. No particular order. Atomic Pumpkin. The second fragrance in my quick five. Atomic Pumpkin... I only have the solid of and the star jelly. I don't have the EDP. This next fragrance I have owned, I just ran out not too long ago of last year's deodorant and my bath bar and shampoo puck. The wife can't get enough of this one. She gives it a nine, which is saying a lot for a autumn fragrance because she likes the lighter, you know, like we're coming out of summer. And that's one of the things that's really nice about autumn um, and being a frag head, you know, someone that just is crazy about fragrances is you come out of spring and summer where you have these bright aquatic floral type fragrances that are fresh and modern and clean. And as you move into autumn and winter, you get to start pulling out the darker fragrances, the more masculine fragrances, the fragrances of the season like Atomic Pumpkin, but also fragrances like Malbolge. And I have a full review of that. I reviewed it also last autumn from Doris Ranch. The wife will actually ask me to wear this one this time of year. That is my second EDP. In that video, I talk about why I've scooped or carved 4040 into the soap there. Tobacco, citrus, anise. I'm not crazy about anise. I do not detect anise by itself. Musk, patchouli, burnt sugar, black pepper, and benzoin resin. This one is an orchestra, you guys. All the notes are coming together just to create this magical fragrance. <sighs> Doug and Fran have been doing this one for years. And there's nothing else quite like it. <sighs> so damn good. Second fragrance, Albolge. Onto the third fragrance. In my opinion, there is no one in the fragrance world that does autumn fall fragrances 
nearly as well, not even in the same league as Phoenix Artisan Accoutrements. Before I go any further, though, I do want to recommend that you guys check out um, Grove. That is the old label that I have right there. The shaving will be, that's Ray Rum, that will be available Black Friday weekend, or Thanksgiving weekend. Hotel Cecil, Capali, Clown Fruit. If you love vetiver, you'll love Monstrasso. And then Sangra di Drago, which is Dragon's Blood with Sandalwood and Oud. All those are fantastic. And then over here, I had some runners up that I really wanted to throw into this, including Dire Down, Chocolate Bourbon, and Hinoki and Sage. There's just so many fragrances in their collection for fall. Just endless. Number three is five. Cider House Five. So far this year in 2024, the first full weekend of September, Atomic Pumpkin and Cider House Five have returned. I expect the next two or Malbage to return soon as well as the next one. But Cider House Five has five notes. It's an homage, a tribute to the book Slaughterhouse Five. And thanks to Douglas, I've now read it. Well, I didn't really read it because I'm not really a reader. I audio booked it and it, it was a great read. I really enjoyed it. Cider House 5 is pipe, smoke, mold cider, oak wood, dried leaves, and linseed. You guys, this is another one that I'm not really a cider guy. There's really only one day out of the year that I drink cider and that's actually a little later in fall just before winter when we go cut down a Christmas tree it's uh, one of our family traditions that we do thermoses um, and you know cups of just the packet cider right because we go out and cut down a tree and so other than that that's like really the only time year after year that I will drink cider and it's a family tradition to drink cider I think the 20 years my wife and I plus years that my wife and I have been together there's only been a couple of years that we haven't done that tradition. So stinking good. I cannot recommend it enough. The cider is there. I absolutely love it. I have the EDP and the solid. I've still never done the bath bar or the deodorant or anything like that, but I will wear Cider House 5 all fall and winter long and right up into the early spring. It's that good. It's damn good. It's good stuff. Maynard. I can't recommend it enough. Like, so like, if you're in that boat with me, like, yeah, cider, trust me, get a sample at the very least and give it a go. Number three, Cider House Five. Fourth, and the only one in this countdown that I didn't pay for, this was sent to me last year for review by Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements. Douglas knew that this was the only seasonal that I didn't have uh, from his lineup. And that's Briar. I still need to get the EDP and everything else. I did end up picking up the Star Jelly. He sent me the Soap and Splash, which there's a link to that review in the description. Same with these other three fragrances. Briar is so good. It's like the lighter, brighter side of autumn. Tobacco, oakwood, vanilla, animalic musk, labdomen, Rose, I don't really detect rose. There is like a floral presence to it down in the bottom of this fragrance. And then crisp dried leaves. In Saturday House 5, we have dried leaves. But in the scent notes of Briar, he has added crisp dried leaves. I don't really de you know, detect uh, a difference in that. And in those reviews, I talk about the fragrance of, of dried leaves. Just basically think of, you know, you got a pile of leaves out back and when you pick it up and you really get down into the bottom of that, that pile of leaves, that's the smell. <sighs> Very earthy. Briar, Saturday House 5, Atomic Pumpkin, Malbage. And this next one, in my personal opinion, you can't go wrong with. Teach their own. You got to get a sample if you never tried these. I'm telling you right now. Briar is fantastic. I wanted to get it for years and I never did. It's just, you know, there's always so many things to buy in this community. I had had a couple of samples of it, like the sample bags, right? Um, so do not overlook Briar. Just because I didn't have it in my arsenal, do not overlook it. I have wanted it for years and it is that good. It is. 
last, certainly not least. And if you know me, you'll know it when you see it. It used to be a seasonal. Once upon a time, this fragrance has been around forever. Cider House 5, I forgot to mention, is like their oldest fall seasonal. It actually goes back to um, before Phoenix Iverson Accoutrements, Francis, uh, Doug's better half. She had a company called Petal, Petal Pusher Fancies, and this was part of her fragrance lineup back in the day. And then when Doug and Fran combined their two companies, which was How to Grow a Mustache, and Petal Pusher Fancies and Creative Feeling Stars and Accoutrements. Some of the fragrances from both places, you know, came over and Cider House 5 was one of them. So Cider House 5 is older than Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements, which they just celebrated their 10th year, 12th year, 10th year, right? Anywho, exit, stage right, Tobin, come back. Harvest Moon. Like I said, been around forever. If you know me, I kind of like it. I might have more than one tub. I might even be wearing the EDP right now while we speak. This is my third bottle of EDP. <sighs> Expect a review of it this autumn. I have wanted to review it the past two autumns. And again, just like how it took me forever to get to Briar. <sighs> there's just always so many things that I want to review or want to do. And there's just never enough time to do them all. I have three fragrances that I want to review for you guys this autumn from Phoenix Artists and Accoutrements, and I have plans for all three going back to last year. <sighs> Harvest Moon is so damn good. Oud, green tobacco, so the leaf when it's green. Black Current, or Current, Black Current, right? That's how I pronounce it. Tobacco Absolute. So now we're getting into the darker tobacco. Hey, Absolute. Hey, Absolute. Peru, Bassam, smoke. I do not detect smoke by itself. This is another one of those orchestras to where all the scent notes are coming together and creating a new fragrance. Spanish moss and white sage. If I had to have one absolute favorite out of all these, it would be Harvest Moon. It is different. It is unique. There's nothing else like it in my den, and I highly doubt that there's anything like it in your den. It's not for everyone. My friend Matthew Lawrence sent me his set because he knew how much I loved it. I don't think he disliked it. He just wasn't crazy about it, and he knew how much I loved it. Harvest Moon. You guys, I can't tell you just how much I love all five of these, and I will be using them all right up like through Christmas and into the new year. Somewhere around Valentine's Day is when I'll stop, stop, stop wearing these and start looking to the spring seasonals, you know, wishing that spring will come. It's the little big things, my friends. Keeping everything in focus, coming up into a, a season where there's going to be a lot going on from the holidays to the election and all that stuff is just noise. Focus on what really matters. You know what it is for me. It's family, college football, and wet shaving. Take care. I'll see you next time.